here it goes. In a standard YDSE arrangement of D equals to 3 millimeter, capital D is 1 meter, wavelength is this much, plane wave is incident normally and on the basis of this, let us see on what things are we supposed to comment. The first maxima option A, B, number of maxima excluding at infinity, thank God the question uh, you know the condition has been very categorically given and the number of minima. Now you would say this is you know a straightforward question but no there is a there is a big twist in this story. If you see lambda is 1 millimeter the separation between the slits that is 3 millimeter. Now you may say so what? You remember the expression of YDSE y equals to capital D by small d into delta x, yes? Right. Now, this expression comes with a big condition and that condition is capital D is much greater than small d is much greater than lambda. And if you observe it here, the first condition is satisfied because capital D, if you see, is 1 meter and small d is 3 millimeter. So, you know, as a reasonable, reasonable condition. But small d is not much, much greater than lambda. So, that means we are not allowed to use this equation. This is not at all allowed. So, what are we going to do? You need to go through the basic. So, this is, you know, a typical uh, parameter or variety of a question of JE advanced where many times the change in conditions are given and trust me the options given are also calculated in such a way that where you have a tendency to use this formula. Now let us try to understand how do we solve this question. Now I need to comment on the first maxima. So let me say right here is the first maxima. Now, what is the characteristic of the first maxima? The characteristic is the path difference is 1 lambda. So, I need to focus on the path difference. Because capital D is much, much greater than small d, so I can say the path difference can be suitably calculated by dropping perpendicular. Anyway, the separation is very less as compared to this. So, let me say this angle as theta. So, this is the path difference from here to here. That is the path difference. So, that path difference can be calculated by delta x as d sin theta and let me directly go with 1 lambda because I have been asked to calculate the position of first maxima. So, what will it give me? The value of sin theta is going to give me 1 by 3, that is cool, sin theta 1 by 3. Now, do you realize this theta is not small? So, there you go, that when small d is comparable to lambda, in that case, theta would not be negligibly small. In other words, you cannot equate sin theta to tan theta. So, never mind, I can now calculate the value of tan theta. If sin theta is 1 by 3, tan theta is going to be 1 by root 8. So, here I go. Now, if I want to calculate the position of the first maxima, so that y1 is going to give me d tan theta and you can solve it, all right, I got it. So, that goes as option number b. Now, we need to comment on number of maxima. Now, this is quite simple. The condition of maxima, if I have to put, is what do I get? Uh, d sin theta, which is the path difference, is plus minus n lambda and beginning from 0. So, this gives me the value of sin theta as plus minus n divided by 3. Do you get that? Do you get that? Because d equals to 3 lambda. So, what are the positions you get? for n equals to 0, n equals to 1, n equals to 2, but you would not go for n equals to 3 because in that case sin theta would be 1 
that means you would be going at infinity and the question clearly says that you need to exclude that right so now central maxima 1 the first up and down so 2 and next 2 so all together I'll have 5 maxima which means option number C is correct and you know between 2 maxima there would be minima so where are the minima let's see so one minima is here the other minima is there but there is also another minima because between 2 to 3 it is still a minima do remember 3 corresponds to theta as 90 but this which is between 2 and 3 is lesser than 90 so on one half on the upper half there are three minima on the lower half there would be three minima so the total number of minima on the screen would be six so making it b c d as the correct one okay that is electromagnetic induction cool electromagnetic induction let's see what does the question have to say in the arrangement shown rails and rod are smooth and have negligible resistance so it's the fairy tale condition no friction no resistance and it says that there is a force F which is applied so here you go that's a force which is applied on this particular slider this one mass is M length is L a magnetic field has been given and you have a capacitor no resistance okay and on the basis of this I need to compute on the acceleration velocity the type of motion and the charge content I need to comment on that now this is a very regular pattern question if you have prepared the you know standard questions from EMI motional EMF you would certainly be getting that the first thing is how much will be the charge on the capacitance so that's C B L V where B L V is the EMF I believe that much you can do either you compute by the Faraday's method or by the motional EMF that's all equivalent now current is of course the derivative of Q with respect to time CBL being constant the derivative of velocity is acceleration dV by dt that is acceleration you get that okay so I got I equals to CBLA and what is that A acceleration you also know there is another part of the story as induction happens that rod will also experience a magnetic force many times people do call it as the induced force which is an after effect of induction and that direction is of course going to be here so that will be F subscript I let me write so I is for induced so how much will be the induced force so that's again a straightforward one b i l so that comes out to be c b square l square multiplied by a so we're almost done now if i talk about the acceleration of the slider so i get that's capital f minus of induced force c b square l square a is equals to mass multiplied by acceleration now I think I'm in a position to comment on the options option number B stands correct that's the acceleration F by M plus B square L square C option number A would be incorrect because if there is an acceleration how come it would move with constant velocity together option number C would also be incorrect because do remember this acceleration is constant so if it's a constant acceleration there would be no question at all about SHM right and charge on the capacitor increases with time I'm with it why because there is an acceleration so velocity increases and if velocity increases the charge has to increase so option number D would be correct so I have B and D let's go for the next oh this is another lovely question that's from mechanics let's see what does it say two blocks of masses M and 2M are connected by a spring and placed on a smooth horizontal surface cool and a constant force F is applied as shown now on the basis of this data I need to comment on the 
maximum compression, maximum elongation, acceleration of center of mass, and finally, number D, minimum acceleration. So this is really lovely one, and I'm very excited to solve this. First of all, if I uh, would introduce, you know, it's always recommended there's one good expression, and you remember that expression. That's, you know, recommended for anyone preparing for JE Advance, that if you have a block here, okay, and two blocks and the forces are F1, M1, M2 and F2 and if you want to calculate the maximum elongation. So in that given case, this is the maximum elongation, alright. So you would see that expression is 2 by K F1 M2 plus of F2 M1 divided by M1 plus M2. I recommend that you memorize it. I insist because that's really going to save your precious time. So maximum elongation, let's see. Well, F1 is F, F2 is 0. You can go with that to compare. So F1, M2. So upstairs will be Fm. F2 is 0. Downstairs is 3m. So 2f by 3k, m will get cancelled. So option number B stands to be correct. How about C, acceleration of center of mass? Now, what's the expression of acceleration of center of mass? That's quite simple, total force divided by mass. Now, the total force is F, the spring force is there, but when you consider both as the system, that spring force gets cancelled. So, that's going to be F divided by 3m, that's the total mass. So, C would be incorrect. Now, maximum compression in the spring. Let's try to see. Or I think I can go with, uh, you know, evaluating option number D, minimum acceleration. Now, everything begins with the free body diagram. What are the forces involved? You know, there is a F. We are concentrating on 2M because we need to comment on its minimum acceleration. Now, the first thing is the acceleration will be minimum if the spring force will be in this direction so that this and this will be, you know, in the opposite direction. On top of that, you want minimum. That means this force you want maximum, right? So if the opposing force is maximum, the acceleration is going to be minimum. Now, can you tell me what would be the maximum restoring force? You would say, hey, that's simple because since I have maximum elongation, K times this. So that's going to be 2F by 3 is the maximum, is the maximum restoring force. So that means under this situation, the acceleration is going to be minimum. So the net force is F by 3, the mass is 2M, so the minimum acceleration would be F by 3 upon 2M, so F by 6M. And eventually I need to comment on the maximum compression in the spring. Now to do this, let's go into that special frame, what we call as the C frame. Now it's always recommended that, you know, if you find a little bit of trouble, you can go with that. Now I think this is really a nice opportunity where I can show you how we can solve the question using C frame. Now do you realize in the C frame, you know, the motion is going to be oscillating because, uh, you know, in the pseudo force you apply, I just want to take it in a very qualitative manner. I just don't want to write it, okay. Now, there's an acceleration there, the acceleration of the center of mass indicating it will get a pseudo force here with respect to center of mass and there's a resultant force which clearly indicates that it's going to be an oscillating motion in the center of mass. Anyway, in the C frame, net momentum is zero. So that means it has to be an oscillating one. And do you realize that this is the beginning of the oscillation at the natural length? So it would go and it would come back. So, you know, the other extreme is where the spring is elongated. And one extreme is this condition where the spring is at its natural length. So in that case, obviously the compression in the spring is not going to happen. So in that given case, 
option number A would be incorrect. So option number B and option number D, that is going to be the correct one. A nice one, isn't it? 